Hello, it's Friday, February 11th. So, um, I've been up on the roof most of the day here. Well, half the day, I guess. Uh, putting up this, the last two rails for the uh, right side here, the inner inboard ones. And the forward one, I remembered to drill the holes into the rail where the hinges connect, but I failed to remember to enlarge the holes and install the nut certs. This is the last of four, and I finally remembered to do that. So it's uh, 29 sixty fourths, I believe, is the size. It's 1 64th bigger than a 3 8 is the hole size. And these are the nut certs that are going in. That's what they look like when they're set. They've got just a little collar over the edge there. And this is the tool for putting them in. So uh, it's a two-part tool. Uh, there's a tool that works like a, a rivet gun deal, but it's like two, three hundred bucks for that thing. These are like twenty-five bucks, and you buy one for each size. So it's got a reverse thread on this nut here. So when you tighten clockwise, it extends. It doesn't really need to be a reverse thread for it to work, but it just logically makes it work out. Um, so you put the nut cert on, on there and you screw it on. You stick it in the hole. Nothing to it, right? Then you uh, put two wrenches on it, hold this one and tighten that one or the other way around. It doesn't really matter. And uh, it pulls the bolt up. And when it does that, it collapses on itself. And it looks like that when it's done. And they're really nice. These happen to be stainless steel. Um, because I'm a nut for stainless steel. But how about that? So this ought to be perfect. Um, should every one of these should be in the right place it would be ironic as hell if some of these are not in the right, right location on the only one that i remember to do but so we got um two there is it supposed to be three of them up here this is the forward one. Oh right there's only two bolts in the hinge here there's one in the rear and this is the rearmost one, one there and one there. Hello, it's Saturday, February 12th, back on solar again. So uh, the last thing I did yesterday evening was make up these angle braces. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to need these for real or not, or uh, am I just making this for doing the maintenance? Uh, so I guess it is for real, but, uh, I just took leftover pieces of hinge, cut them in the roughly three inch lengths. And, uh, so now I've got a secure means of holding this up and I don't have to worry that if there's a wind gust, it'll blow this thing over. I've been using sticks and been very un uneasy about the idea because, uh, if one of these panels blows over to the side, side over, it'll be catastrophic. It'll... It'll rip the, probably destroy the panel and potentially rip this uh, angle rail that I have bonded onto the bus. And I've got enough things going on. So also yesterday, I got this last piece installed. This went way easier. This piece happens to be not in the middle of the bus. Um, I think what I did was I centered off of these rivets, assuming that these were centered. But with my measurements, finding center, uh, it just worked out that way. So that made this a lot easier. I remembered to avoid where my gas pipe is going over the roof. And I also remembered that in the corners, there's a big space uh, where the gas pipes, the gas pipe goes around that, that corner. There's, there's a large space, so 
I'm feeling comfortable about that. I thought I was gonna have to bore a scope up there and double check that it didn't hurt the gas pipe. But anyway, so what I'm doing now is uh, this rail, I remembered to put the, the rib nuts in there. So that's what I'm using to hold these two panels up in the air. Um, I already have the hole in the hinge, that hole and the one on the other side and, and every other piece has been pre-drilled and they're all in the same place. Um, I use one for a template for the other. So uh, right now I'm just piggybacking off of this side so I can work on that side. And I've got one brace on that panel and one brace on this panel. So I use my 90 degree drill attachment to drill the quarter inch hole through here. And then I use the 3 8 drill on this extension and that allows with the, the curve of the roof, it allows the drill to get down low enough to where I'm drilling straight on to the hole. And if I remember to bring it with me, I've got the rib nuts. So this is a half inch drill bit. I don't have a 29 60 fourths with a quarter inch shank. And that little chuck there won't hold a bigger one. And I could jump through my own ass and change the chuck on that if I want, but I'm gonna try uh, for this um, to use just a rat tail file, which I remembered to bring up with me. And I mean, I only gotta take a 64th of an inch. That's a 128th off each side of the hole. So I'm going to try filing that out. If that goes easily enough, that's the method I'll use for all the rest of them. And I got a whole pocket full of these guys. And I got my wrenches and the setting tool. So if this cooperates, this should go relatively easily and quickly. And then I've got a total of 10 of these guys to put in here. I got two, four, six, eight, ten. And then at that point, I will be done mechanically installing these solar panels. Finally, this has been really long and painful. Uh, a lot of lessons learned here. Um, next will come the electrical end of it. Now, I'm pretty sure that this wire will meet the wire on the adjacent panel. That's what I measured anyway, because I got this on the forward side and this one positioned also on the forward side. So there should be enough length between the two of these to meet. And then that one up there, I think is on the, the forward one, the electrical connectors on the rear side. So I, I think one leg of this will all be uh, able to just plug right in. And then I'll need to run a separate conductor from the last one all the way back here somewhere. Uh, probably to the left of my ladder, so it's out of the way of the walk path. And I've ordered, I have one and I ordered another one, it's going to get here Monday. The pass through with the um, seal tight connectors for solar wire. So my plan is to put one at each side of the bus so I don't have to have wires crossing up here. I'm going to have the wire cross underneath, uh, inside the bus back there where the mini split air conditioner is. That's the plan. I haven't actually gotten too deep into the wiring piece of it because I don't really have many choices. I mean, I have no choice. It's gonna have to go that way. So, right, uh, let me uh, go ahead and start filing on this and uh, get this stuff moving. All right, that was easy. It took about 30 seconds worth of filing. And uh, the only thing I forgot to bring up here on the roof is a broom to sweep off all the metal shavings, which is uh, there something I could do later, I guess. But uh, all right, onward and upward. We're going to go to the next one. OK, well, here's a moment worth immortalizing. All the structural work is done on the panels. All the nut certs are in. All the rails are permanently mounted. I've got three braces made. There's going to be a total of six. Um, I don't see the need for any more than for that many. If I ever do want to tilt these panels, 
it'll be uh, only for one side of the bus. Um, so that's that, man. So now I'm gonna start working on the electrical part. Yeah, see what I was saying earlier? I put the electrical panel piece at the rear of the forward two so they'd be closer to these. And these are at the front since I've got the three foot gap here that will allow me to bridge that gap. And then from here to here, that ought to reach, ought to reach anyway, when I measure it. We're gonna find out here in just a minute. Pretty exciting. All right, well, <clears throat> the span <clears throat> from the, the first panel to the second panel, the wire is plenty long, just right actually span from the second panel to the third panel is a couple feet shorter than I'd like. Uh, I've got them clipped together. I, I think I'm going to extend that. And then we're going to have to extend that tag that line right there from the third panel back here to this guy as well as the one that's way in the front up there that's got to come back to this guy as also all right i think the right place to put this is going to be all the way back here i mean that would be too far forward I think that'll miss <clears throat> the area that I have underneath. I'll show you that in a minute. But if I come back here to where that rivet is just on the inside there, like right there, I can glue this down with Gorilla Construction adhesive and it'll seal like there's no tomorrow. And if I'm lucky, I'll be able to fish this wire. Well, I gotta look inside because there was a reinforcement bracket. I think it was more like over here. I don't remember. Maybe I can go back and look at some old videos. Because if I drill right here, assuming that uh, there's nothing underneath there, I could kind of screw up here. So here's, uh, let me show you what's up underneath. All right, this is the back wall of the bus. There's a back window and it's bad here so up there mini split and anyway this piece here is a service panel designed to be removed for exactly what I'm doing right now and other things and it's a pain in the butt to take that out because first I've got to take off that front piece right there on both sides and then that'll come out so I'm going to start by taking off just that front piece right there and look inside and see if I could see what I would like to see up in there. And then maybe I'll be able to drill that hole in the roof and fish the wire down without having to take all this off because this means taking the curtains off and all the other stuff. And I mean, that's like a couple hours of, of work to pull that panel out there. So. Let's uh, let's get started. I'm gonna have to lay down something here to keep all the crud from getting on the bed, which is a pain, but it is what it is. Okay, that wasn't too bad. I took off the front panel and then the side panel on both sides and then this upper panel and the aluminum angle and the curtains and all that stuff. Yeah. Oh, half an hour I guess but anyway so there's that reinforcement I was talking about right here and that is in line with the inboard edge of where the blinky lights were the warning lights so I've got the whole area above this plate that I put in up there that's blocking off where the warning lights were 
And all I gotta do is be, you could see the, the rivets way up in there, right there. All right, I just need to be to the rear of those rivets and I'm in the clear. I'll show you on the roof what I mean. Okay, here's the cover plate for the warning lights. So I just need to be outboard this seam to be away from that reinforcement that's on the inside. And these are the rivets. So this area behind this seam is just one layer of sheet metal and we're gold in there. So right where I have this thing sitting is perfect. Now what I want to do, oops, sorry. What I want to do is use a grommet or two grommets, preferably one. If I could squeeze it in there. Yeah, I should be able to squeeze it in that little space down there. So let me find some grommets. So I don't have to worry about the wire rubbing on this metal here. And we'll be able to get these panels connected today, I think. That would be great. And then we could start charging off a of solar. I can cut my umbilical cord. Oh, I forgot to mention, the guys at Santan Solar where I bought my solar panels, good folks, by the way. I highly recommend them. They gave me these uh, Y connectors, one for positive and one for negative, and also these fuses. They said that it's wise to put a fuse on each string in case you get a short in one of the panels. It'll blow this fuse before the other series can backfeed and overload what's going on on the other end. I don't fully understand it, but uh, that's the way they explained it. So this is how this works. It's all sealed, these O-rings, really nice quality stuff. That yeah, screws all together. So I'm using silicone grease to aid in all this. And I learned that um, just from my days of being an automotive mechanic, but also on this bus, one of the um, electrical connectors on an onboard computer for the multiplex electrical system, water got past the seals because the seals were installed dry and the little lips on the seals, these were not ovaries like that. They were a little bit different shape, but um, the little lips didn't lay flat because they were not lubricated in there. So um, we're gonna put a little bit of silicone lube on all of our connections. I did on the roof already. And he also gave me a pack of these. These were really cheap. Uh, I don't know how many of these I'm gonna need. Probably none, maybe one, two but we're good to go.